Hey guys, I've not long got back from um, some shopping and the kids fell asleep in the car so I put them down for naps and I thought I'd finally get a video update to you guys um, about where I'm at with the pregnancy and um, the shopping that I did today. So I'm 30 weeks and one day today so I've got less than 10 weeks left assuming things go to plan. Um, so I actually thought I'd probably better get my act together. I've been putting everything off to the last minute. I guess being third baby, um, I didn't really stress too much about needing things done. I don't want to wash everything yet because I don't want to feel like I have to rewash it, which I might do. My dog is being a jerk. Um, so I haven't done any of that yet and also still feels like it's I got ages but at the same time it still feels like it's a rush too so we sort of started getting our act together and getting some stuff sorted so silly me thought I wouldn't need to worry about the baby sales the last go um, so I didn't buy anything and then now I don't think the baby sales are on until August or something again so which is obviously after the baby's due because I'm due on the 11th of July um, so that's a bit poop. So now I'm sort of looking for specials where I can grab them and that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, so, okay. I, um, I'll tell you about where I'm at with the pregnancy first. So obviously, as I said, I'm 30 weeks one day. Um, do you know, this has probably been like the easiest pregnancy for me. I've not had any sickness except for that little bit. Um, I can't think of any issues that I've had. The only thing is my hips were a pain in the butt when I was like the first few probably months, but um, doctor said with the next babies, he'd recommend I lose more weight before trying again, um, which will be the plan anyway. Um, and then since the last few months, I haven't had any issues with my hips, which have been great. Um, I've had no sickness. Um, I don't think, I think I maybe had a little bit of headaches at the start. Um, bit of fatigue, but nothing unmanageable or that I didn't sort of expect. Anyway, I've had no reflux this time, which I had with Noah. Um, and again, it's a girl, so I didn't really expect to have the same symptoms as him. I sort of expected to track along the same lines as I have with Eden, which I have. Um... I've had no real issues. I, I went to the hospital once um, with the decreased movements um, and everything turned out fine and now she just won't stop kicking so that's pretty cool. And um, what else? Yeah, I don't know. Aside, and I mean, even with the fatigue, I think a lot of that is... So I've changed jobs. I don't know. I think I told you guys. but um, So I'm driving for Uber now instead of working in fast food, uh, which is better because I'm sitting on my butt for most of the time I'm working um, well, all of it <laughs> um, but I'm getting up earlier so I'm waking up sort of like between 3 30 and 4 in the morning on the days that I'm working to get out and about early and to get back within sort of like a reasonable time of the kids having brekkie and all that sort of thing and so my mum and Terry's mum can go out and do their thing um, so I think that's probably contributing to the fatigue, to the tiredness. Well, I assume it is, because I'm still going to bed at a ridiculous hour at night. Um, most nights, but getting up earlier. So that's where I think, I don't think so much. I feel quite energetic otherwise, you know, like I've been mowing the lawns, I've been doing burn off in the backyard, I've been trimming trees, that sounds worse than in like little bushes and stuff. Um, yeah, I feel like I've, had a, a fair bit of energy it's just been sometimes getting past that I couldn't be bothered getting up and all that sort of thing so yeah I think it's it's been really fairly easy I'm pretty sure I'd say this is probably my easiest yet um I am getting it's starting to hurt when she moves only a little bit nothing unbearable and um a little bit of twinging pain down below uh sometimes and that's about it. My boobs are sore, my nipples are sore, um, but that's to be expected. And actually, funny story, so I was in the shops today, and um, 
Noah was getting whingy because he was really tired and I didn't bother bringing him a bottle because I hadn't actually planned on doing much after their swimming lesson today. So, um, and we had some lunch and stuff, so he wasn't hungry, but he was just wanting to lie down and go to sleep. So anyway, um, I was just wearing this, so just the maternity singlet. I don't have a bra on underneath here or anything. And so we're walking through the shop and... I'm like, what do you need, Bubba? Like, you know, tell mommy. And he sort of come in for a cuddle at first. And I was like, oh, you know, you're very cute. And then next minute he just grabs my top and like reefs it down to try and get my boob out to have a feed. And that was really quite embarrassing. I was on the phone with Terry at the, at the time too. So I didn't really have hands to stop anything in, in a shopping center full of people. But thankfully the boob didn't come out. <laughs> and um, I managed to get him through the rest of the shopping trip without needing to pull anything out or anything. So that was pretty cool. Um... Yeah, so he's back to nursing. I don't know if I told you guys. I probably did. I honestly have the worst memory. That is one thing that sucks. My memory and stuff is getting worse with every kid. Um, I'd recommend brain training. Um, so Noah sort of went off the boob. I've had, I obviously had issues um, nursing. I dried up my own milk trying to increase it, um, which I shouldn't have. I didn't even have a problem. Anyway, so I did that. I dried up my milk um, accidentally and anyway, Noah was fine. He was still going for what was there and there's sort of hardly anything left once I fell pregnant. Um, and once my colostrum came in, he wasn't really interested. I think that was around the 27 week mark or something he got. I think that he just sort of lost interest. Anyhow, um, I kept sort of trying because I want to try and tend and feed them once the baby's here. And uh, when I was expressing, he'd want any that I was getting out so I was doing that and then now he's decided he's back on so pretty much once or twice a day he wants to nurse so I don't know how much he's getting when I'm sort of expressing I'm only getting a couple mil so I'm guessing that's about all he's getting plus the comfort and stuff but he wants it and I want him to carry on nursing because it's good for him when we're um once the baby's here so that's where that's at um okay so yeah I pretty much hadn't done anything for the baby so I've got a lot to do I broke uh, my pram. I have the Strider Compact. And um, I broke it. I was having it. Once I tried to learn how to use the second seat, uh, I could for a while. I had dramas with it. Anyway, somehow, whether it was me throwing it, which is a possibility, or what, but the second seat is stuck into the pram. And then the hook bit, the bit that hooks to the where the wheels are to hold the seat up, that has come away as well so I need to replace the frame and I need to somehow get the second seat out of the pram so I'm um, waiting to hear back for a date to when I can take that in I've organized that today um, also because I did that it sort of got pushed to the side and left and not looked after and some of the the insert has gone a bit moldy so I've um, decided there's a lady on Facebook that I found that's doing pram liners and stuff like that. So she's going to make me up two um, unisex pram liners um, with the shoulder straps as well um, and postage. So that's that's costing me $59, which is pretty sweet. I'm pretty stoked about that. So those, and the pram is going to cost 103 all up to, for the removal of the seat and for the repair. Um, so that's pretty good. I'm pretty cheering. Um, so that should be done hopefully this well hopefully all together the pram will be ready in like two weeks um also i haven't bought a car seat and i went looking today so terry and i are deciding between getting a new car seat for the baby or whether i put the newborn insert back in noah's and the baby get noah's car seat and noah moves up to eden's car seat and eden gets a booster seat so eden's just turned four so she can go into a booster seat but i don't really like them it, sort of feel a bit flimsy in comparison to a car seat so um, I'm gonna check it out today check where her head and shoulders are in comparison to the straps and the um and the headrest and things sorry and um and decide from there what way we're gonna do things um and if she stays in her car seat then um the baby will be getting a new car seat so um not sure yet what way that's gonna go um I haven't done any clothes washing pretty
pretty much the only thing I had is some leftover breast pads from Noah and there's only a couple of packs of those and mum bought me some maternity pads while well, they were on sale the other day so and it was only a couple of packs so I needed more of those so with the um, breast pads I have found I think it's called milk savers or something like that there's something online and they sell like the hucker pumps as well so the silicon ones that you can squeeze attach let go and it sort of sucks them and I had those with Noah and they were fantastic they were so good they collected all the milk and stuff like that um, and it was awesome so these ones that I'm looking at now these milk savers or whatever they're called they are sort of like dome shaped and there's a hole and like a lid and there's like a hole in the lid for your nipple to go in and you put them in your bra and they just sort of mimic the shape of your breast I guess um, and they'll collect your milk that way and I thought I feel like they will be better than having breast pads because they'll catch the milk instead of like to save instead of just catching it to throw away or whatever or wash out um, so I think I'm gonna do that and then just have the disposables for like the early days I love the um, breast pads actually for when my nipples are really sore in the beginning I put the nipple cream on and then wear a breast pad whether it's just against my singlet or however I'm dressing um, just to stop my nipples rubbing so much while they're sore um, I found that to be awesome so I'll keep them for that and probably depending on how it looks try and get away with the milk savers most of the other time if not I'll get some more of the breast pads as well but for now that's the plan um, so I've got just got to buy those milk savers uh, what else I've washed the mattress out I don't know what you'd call it the outside of the mattress for the bassinet and I've bought a new mattress protector for that but I want to pull also apart all the fabric from the bassinet and wash that and then I'll put all that back together and that'll be that ready I haven't washed any of her clothes yet um, I'll probably leave that for another couple of weeks but I did buy today the Lux flakes to wash them with um, I still have to clear a drawer out for in my room so I rearranged the cupboard in our room I mean like I completely pulled it out and Terry helped me rebuild just one side of the cupboard back in and then into the other two-thirds of it we've just put our tall boy with our TV and stuff on it and in doing that it's made more space for all our clothes and things so now I've got one drawer in there that I'm gonna use for her stuff until she moves into Eden's room or whatever um, which should be all I need for the time being rather than doing what I usually do and washing a whole ton of sizes I'll just wash what I need as I need it um, and I think I worked out I should have in my bedside table I think I've worked out now my bedside table became useless after Noah because I've got the bassinet that it's the co-sleeper and the way my room was set out initially um, I pretty much couldn't use the drawers in my bedside table but now that we've moved the tall boy into the cupboard with the TV I've been able to move everything so my bedside table will be able to go next to my bed along with the bassinet now so it's pretty cool so I think when I clear those drawers out she'll have those two drawers as well whether they're for nappies wipes all that sort of thing or whatever or more clothes um, so I have to do that once I get all those things done I then need to put, pack both of our hospital bags um, I don't want to pack mine yet because I haven't bought which I want to um, rather than using stuff I've got um, I want to get a new robe for the hospital because it's so good to keep warm and to be able to access everything underneath easily um, and it's just soft and comfortable which is a must and also I want to buy like bed socks I guess they are just like little fluffy socks um, or slippers alternatively for the hospital and at home as well because I just think they're amazing <laughs> um, yeah and I'll probably buy new jammies and stuff like that as well um, and then anything else I'm sort of using now so I won't want to pack it until closer anyway so none of that will probably be getting done um, I'm also I bought I ended up buying more So there's the Lux flakes that I bought today to do her wash. Oh my gosh, I haven't smelt that since Noah was little. 
forgot how good they smell. Um, I brought two more packs of the maternity pads. I went. I usually use the Libra, but I think these are like the sister brand of it anyway. Um, and they were on sale for four bucks, so I just grabbed two more packs of those. So I've got four packs of those and a half a pack of my Libra ones that I had left over from Noah. Um, so I brought them today. And then, so another thing that I need to do, or that I want to do, I didn't do this with either of the kids, and I think it's actually a brilliant idea. So with my meal planning and meal prepping that I've been doing, I've been any extra, um, I've been packing away and I've been freezing. And we've been using either as you know, rush dinners or stuff like that if we've been out at church or um, or out with friends or whatever and we'd otherwise get takeout. We've had meals here or if we've eaten dinners that I haven't had leftovers for Terry to take for lunch. We've had meals here in the freezer ready to go, just pull them out and we've been eating those and it's been heaps better. So um, along with that, I've also been keeping it for when the baby's here to make sure that I'm eating better um, and make sure I'm eating enough to, to help with my um, milk supply and stuff like that. And just, you know, to give myself a bit of a break with dinners and stuff. Obviously, Terry will help, but just to give us all a chance. This is probably, like, it's nerve-wracking every baby you have. But I think this one's really sort of nerve-wracking because I've still got a baby. And I've got a demanding toddler. Four-year-old, she's a kid. I don't know. Um, but um, there's just so much, you know, going from two to three... And we didn't really settle into like a routine like I would like to. Like we have a routine, but not as organized as I like to be. So this is probably like the most nerve wracking one I think so far. We'll see how we go with the next one. <laughs> um, but people talk often about um, making up meals ready for when the baby's here. So I think that's going to be an awesome idea. So I'm really going to get proactive on that. I've bought today some different containers while I was out. Um, so I bought the, the yeah, 1,000 mil and the 750 mil containers and lids um, for those. Just for making up different size meals and based on how much I have left over and stuff. Um, and I think these cost like $7.65 or something a pack for containers. It would have obviously changed between the two sizes. but um, And I didn't the receipt to my wallet. But yeah, I think it was about $7.65 or $8 something. For 50 of them which is pretty awesome I think um, and then like four dollars something for the pack of 50 lids so that was awesome so that's my plan with those I also bought um, I brought two of these buckets I think they were about three bucks I'll have to double check I think they're supposed to be three bucks I didn't make sure when I scanned that when she scanned them that they were that same price but I've just bought these one for um, in our room for the baby and then one in for Noah's room because he doesn't have one yet either um, just a clothes basket for gathering their washing and stuff I have three baskets in the bathroom I have like a linen one so towels, bedding, all that sort of thing I have the kids one and then I have mine and Terry's one and um, yeah so basically and then so Eden's got a bucket like that in her room and she just puts her own clothes in there when she's getting changed if she's in her room instead of the bathroom or whatever um, and so that's the plan with these is that when I'm changing bub that she'll have one in our room for through the night um, and this for another reason I'll tell you that in a sec um, and in Noah's room so basically so I'm not I'm finding that when we're doing quick changes whether it's me mum Terry's mum Terry whatever when we're doing quick changes and stuff in the room um, his clothes are just sort of getting thrown on the ground instead of going into their laundry basket. So this way, it'll actually look nice and tidy in the meantime. The other reason I need a basket for the baby's clothes beside our bed is because we've decided to use cloth nappies this time. I wanted to do it with Eden, but I was too nervous being a first time mum. I just thought I wasn't gonna have time and stuff like that. So third time round, probably seems crazy to start now, but we are. Um, so I just bought, I looked at the price of them online. I didn't even know where to start, to be honest. Um, a couple of like pages have startup packs and stuff and they're just, they're honestly like so expensive, I think, brand new. Um, and, and I didn't know which brands were good and everything. And I was just, I felt totally overwhelmed and in over my head. So, um, 
and obviously with me not working very much and just things like that I sort of wanted to save money too not that the money side really mattered for a couple of reasons one I prefer to make sure the kids have what they need before worrying about money you know if that makes sense that priority is that they have what they need and and make the money you know um but what was the other thing um and also I guess in the long run between if we still manage to or do have multiple babies they're going to pay themselves off anyway um but anyhow I found this gorgeous mum on Facebook um selling some nappies not far from where I live and um she was a strict um what do they call it strip and sterilizer I think so um I'm still a noob with this stuff but basically like they put them through bleach soaking every so often and stuff and they're really good nick but they're so cute actually so most of them are girly because her bub was a girl look at that um there's a few unisex ones in here so if they fit i might use them on Noah as well um and have to add to them if we have a boy maybe i don't know but look aren't they so beautiful i'm so impressed like they make disposables just laughable in the sense that these are so cute um, so yeah, I think I bought 38 or something and, um, plus she had the inserts, plus she's got new inserts, plus she's thrown in, I think they're called like the nappy liners. So for the poos and stuff like that. So you just throw that part away. Um, so I bought a stack of those. So that's another reason why I bought the bucket to have in our room so that if I need to swap and change between the nappies through the night and stuff, they'll go in as well. Which leads me to another item I bought today, which I've had multiple of these. And they either end up getting used as dog water buckets and then chewed because my dog is a Rottweiler. Um, or whatever. That won't happen anymore. I've bought a metal buckets. But anyway, so I just went to Kmart and picked up the, the nappy pails with lids. So I bought one of each because um, I've been told you need to soak the... I think it's the liners and the covers separately and then you can wash them together or something like that so um yeah so I bought two of those for that with the lids um and I did one sec buy also Coles as I said I missed the baby sales so I was just trying to buy things um as well priced as I could anyway so I did buy the box of newborn nappies and disposables. Uh, I paid twenty five dollars for one hundred and eight, so that's not too bad. Um, but for the meconium poos at the start, and if we're going out for big days and we're going to have like or potentially have stinky nappies on us or whatever, um, they're going to be the best bet. So I've got a box of those now as well. Um, and also with the nappies, so apparently you can't put them in the clothes dryer. Since moving to this house, mostly since this house, but pretty much my entire life since we got a dryer, I've been super lazy. We have so much hanging space here for clothes. I was looking at it. I don't know why. You can't see it. Um, but we have a big proper clothesline. Plus we have two different areas that have the, like the undercover clotheslines. But with the dog... Um, it's too hard to use them, so I just don't. Um, so I've been wanting to, in terms of saving money as well, wanting to, I wanted to buy like an air, an air or whatever you call it, um, this thing, the like a little indoor clothesline or outdoor clothesline, whatever, um, pop up one. So I've been wanting to buy one anyway, just for little stuff and just to try and save how much I'm using the clothes dryer. But now with the nappies, they need to be dried like that anyway so um that's worked out perfect so I bought them um with whoop, some new pegs because I don't own any that's how that's how long it's been um just some more hangers just to if I need you know if we're going to be hanging like a lot of things on there to hang the baby clothes on there as well and I bought some new bins one for Noah's room that one was five um, and I think this one was $4.50. This one's for our room. Um, just for the nappies and things like that and the wipes and stuff. Um, 
save me, it's honestly a laziness thing just to save me from coming out and putting all the nappies and stuff out through the night or whatever. I'll just do it the next day. Um, yeah, so that's basically that. I think that's everything I got today. Yeah, but um, makes me feel like so much more settled that there's more stuff that I've got ready but I've still got to get so I've still got to make some meals up which I'm going to probably start doing I think Terry's going to start watching the kids like taking them to the park or taking them to see their puppy um of a Monday afternoon which will leave me more time to meal prep and stuff or, or do more videos and things like that so I've got to do that um I've also got to buy um nipple cream I forgot to do it while I was out and but I think pretty much everything else I should already have here anyway from the kids. I will, if I have trouble with my milk supply, with Noah I had a, an oversupply until um, until eight weeks, and that's when I accidentally dried my milk up. Um, so up until, and, and it was longer than that before I needed them, um, bottles, up until that point we weren't using bottles. And I do wanna buy new bottles if it comes to needing bottles, but I'm not gonna do that yet. Uh, yeah, so that, can all just wait anyway um and yeah so the only other thing is to show you my bump it's a bit of a crappy angle right now so i'll get up and do that shortly um i weighed in at 69 and a half kilos which is a uh, full term weight with noah i think i think it was maybe 69.7 with him and he was my my heaviest baby but i didn't lose all the weight with him so I got the heaviest with him, if that makes sense. Um, and that's now where I'm at, and I still have 10 weeks to go. So I'm a little bit freaked out. I still have weight to gain. They said I could gain till about 73. Um, and with the other two, I wasn't worried, but this time I don't want to go over. Oh, did I tell you I passed my glue first test? I don't know. But anyway, I did, um, which is another thing I was worrying about about my weight. But anyway, so 69 and a half, that probably doesn't sound like a lot to most people, just so you know. But I'm five foot nothing. It's like five foot two or something. And I'm a really tiny frame usually. I'm about a size six, um, which is Australian obviously, um, before babies. And I was a six to eight after Eden once I lost the weight as well. So um, I'm pretty small usually. So for me, uh, I obviously started overweight. And so 69 and a half is quite high for me, um, even pregnant. As I said, that's almost completely like worst case full term pregnant weight. Um, but yeah, so anyway, that's everything I think that I've got to tell you guys for the time being on that. Um, sorry I was like getting another video out. I know I'm ridiculous at this, uh, but this one's done now anyway, and I'll um, keep tabs and. Um, update you guys more on different things as I go along. The baby's kicking, but I don't think you can see it in the black. Oh well. Um, yeah, so I'll chuck in either the pictures of my 30 week or when I'm finished packing all this stuff back away, I'll get up and chuck in the video, a video of, um, of me today. But either way, you'll get some sort of an idea of, of the bump anyway. So that's it. So thank you guys for watching and um, yeah, just hit me up on Instagram. Talk to me on Instagram and Facebook because I really love seeing comments and stuff like that. It's really cool and I always talk back. So um, yeah, do that. Anyway, bye guys. <laughs>